Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Quest for Faith with Brian. And today I have two special guests. I have Jackie and Megan, and they have a awesome podcast called Let's Talk About It. And y'all, I'm really excited to have you guys on. Um, I came across your channel a few weeks ago. and I was like, I have to reach out to these two um, because I don't know. It's, it, I love the concept that you guys have on your channel. So thank you guys very much for coming on today. Thanks for having yeah, us. Thanks for having us. We're excited. So, yeah. So um, for those that have not seen their, seen their channel, and obviously I'm going to have all the links and everything uh, in the description below, so please go and check it out. But Jackie is a Catholic, Megan is a Protestant, and they talk about everything. And they have so many different topics over their channel where they're just talking about it in a nice, friendly manner, which is sometimes odd to find when Protestants and Catholics are talking. And so me being a convert, I'm thinking this is fantastic because this is the type of dialogue that Catholics and Protestants need to have because we agree on 90 plus percent of things. It's that the smaller percentage is where the debate comes in. So, um, but I wanted to start off first with each of you kind of going through your faith journey. Like uh, what was, what, Obviously, Jackie, I'm assuming you grew up Catholic. Um, Megan, I did. Okay. And then Megan, you grew up obviously in, in different uh, Protestant denominations. But if one, if you guys want to take turns and kind of going back and forth on on how you guys grew up. Sure. Megan, do you, you want to first? start? Oh, you want to go Oh, first? okay. I can go first. Go for it. Okay. Um, yes, I'm a cradle Catholic, um, born and raised Catholic. I... Um, was born and raised in Steubenville, Ohio, where like Franciscan University of yeah. Steubenville is, which I know if I feel like people on Catholic Christian YouTube know what that is. We, very so, well. Yeah. Um, it's like the hub now. Yeah. <laughs> of everything Catholic. Yeah. So I grew up there. Um, I, my family, I was raised Catholic um, on my dad's side. Everyone is very Catholic, like my grandma and my aunt on that side, who I feel like really have inspired me throughout my life and my faith. Um, and I was, we went to mass every Sunday. I went to Catholic school literally my entire life because I ended up going to Franciscan for college. And um, I would say that I definitely kind of fell away from my faith when I was in college, like at the end of high school. Um, and I had a reversion to my Catholic faith at the end of my time at Franciscan. I actually went to Franciscan, not because it was super Catholic. It was because it was the best option financially for me. Mm -hmm. um, and close and to that's home. why I went there. Uh, and I feel like God really worked there. And I always credit um, my reversion. I very much felt like the Blessed Virgin Mary, a part of my reversion back to the faith, um, which I think is why I'm so like cemented into the Catholic faith. Um, and then since then I've had like my ups and downs, but I've always remained Catholic. Um, yeah, that's, I guess my journey in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, I, I, I think that's, that's fantastic that you reverted back because there's so many people I know of that grew up Catholic and they had came from what you would perceive to be strong Catholic families and they go to college and they're just done. And yeah. a lot of times it's not even they go to another denomination. It's just they're done. And uh, then they go to mass on Easter and Christmas and act like they're <laughs> I'm still Catholic. And anyways, so that's that's awesome. And so growing yeah. up in Steubenville, too, I think uh, I know that can be a rough, rough town sometimes. And I think it's getting better from what I've what I've been hearing, because I I even know people now that are still moving there, mainly because yeah. Matt Frat keeps talking about it on Pints with Aquinas. But uh, yep. <laughs> while he's it's so funny he's like this place is amazing you have to move here it's great catholic community oh i had to dodge a drug dealer walking into my studio today it's like wait what <laughs> so yeah. which is it <laughs> mm -hmm. so um, it's like a little chicago in some ways yeah, Bill, so. right uh and i and honestly there's a lot of towns like that across america like i uh, i went to college in abilene texas and that's exactly how Abilene's like. There's, uh, there's a. I, so I grew up Church of Christ, and so there's a. My really, mom did too. Okay, <laughs> so there's a really big Church of Christ school there, uh, Abilene Christian University, in Abilene, Texas, and there's a 
Baptist University and a, let's say Methodist University there too. And the town's only 100,000 people. Like it's a small town. It's not like it's this massive town, but it has three fairly decent sized universities there. And the universities are great, but the poverty level and everything else there is just terrifying sometimes. And there's parts of towns you don't want to go into at night. Um, and so, yeah, it, they're, they're, those towns are just spotted all over America. So that's, that's awesome. And then, so Megan, uh, so how, what, uh, faith background did you grow up in? Um, was it non-denominational kind of what, what happened there? Yeah, I grew up Christian too. Um, it's funny, my, my parents actually, they went to Bible school, um, graduated with ministry degrees. They actually were Pentecostal. Um, and then as they were graduating their Pentecostal Bible school, realized that they didn't think that they were Pentecostal anymore. <laughs> so they went on like a faith journey of really like diving in and trying to figure out what they believe. Um, so by the time I was born, we, they were a part of a church in Wisconsin um, that ended up having a lot of issues with the leadership, actually. Um, the church ended up dissolving and it was like really painful. My dad was an elder, so it was really messy. So then my family didn't go to church for a little while because we had to like heal. Yep. Uh, we moved and started going to an evangelical free church. Um, and that's sort of where I grew up was in this evangelical free church. Um, it, it sort of had its own issues um, when Every I was in does. high school. Yeah, <laughs> my my dad felt called to be a pastor um, and he felt that God was calling our family to church plant. So we actually um, started a church plant. Um, long story short, the church plant failed because of a family involved. And that just caused a lot of sort of trauma in my family. So for a while in high school, I felt really abandoned by God. And so I never like felt that God didn't exist, but I really struggled with whether or not he loved us because I was like, why would you call us into ministry? We took this big step of faith and then it felt like you just like left us out in the dust. We were really mistreated by our church when we returned. Uh, we were put under church discipline for like years um, and it was really, really hard. And so I just really struggled with, I didn't want to be involved in church um, I didn't understand any of that. And then when I graduated high school, I really felt that God was calling me to go to Bible school. And I was like, I, what is this? Like, no, I don't <laughs> want to even go to church. <laughs> like, I for sure don't want to go to Bible school. And I just really felt him like speaking to me, like very like directly that I was supposed to go to Bible school. And so it's funny, I ended up journaling like little 18 year old Megan, I was journaling one day and I was reading um, the Psalm where it talks about that when we follow the Lord, he gives us the desires of our heart. And as I was reading it, I was like, this doesn't mean that if I follow Jesus, I get everything I want. What this means is when I follow the Lord and I surrender to him, my desires turn into what he desires. Mm -hmm. And I receive what the Lord desires. And so I wrote in my journal, I was like, I don't want to go to Bible school. I don't even want to go to church, but I'm going to start doing those things because I know that's what you desire and you have to change my heart, God, like that's your job. <laughs> and so I applied Moody Bible Institute. I got in okay. and it was just a really beautiful journey of the longer I was there and the more I just surrendered to God the desires of my heart genuinely did change. And I really just felt this like deep love to go into ministry, to be involved in the local church, to follow God. Um, and that's continued. And so that's why I always encourage people that like, even if you're not feeling it, God can change your heart. If you are willing and surrender to him and like soften your heart, he will give you those desires. And the love I have for the church now, even though I have experienced such church hurt, um, is just a testament to the Holy Spirit in my life. Yeah, that's that's powerful. And growing up, I was involved in an, a few church splits and collapses. Um, and it, it wasn't as if it didn't affect me as much because my dad at most was a deacon at one church and like we were involved, but I mean, it's it's crazy. We had one church that split because they were arguing over the order of of worship, and and it was like really, and so all the young families were like, "Y'all are going crazy," and we moved to another church, and this church kind of dissolved down. And then 
I think it's it's still around, but it basically lost half its members um, over a, a simple dispute. Now, I was, I don't know, how old was I? Nine, ten at the time, so who knows? Like, it could have been more in-depth than that. Um, but, I mean, you see that all the time. And, and, and I feel you on the being called to go to Bible school because when I was, so through high school, I grew up in Los Angeles, like, or a thousand Oaks, California. And I was one of the only Christians out of my friend groups. Like, uh, I mean, yeah, I was one of the regular churchgoers. I'll, I'll put it that way. Like even my, my best friend was Catholic, but he totally was the, okay, I got my confirmation. I'm done, uh, type of Catholic. <laughs> and, um, and so I always kind of felt this, uh, uh, I did young life with them and all that kind of stuff, but I always felt like it was superficial for me. And so when I was going, when I was deciding where I was going to go to school, I really didn't want to go to a Christian college. Like I wanted to go party. That was really my mindset when I was 18, 19. And mm -hmm. I had volunteered at a young life camp um, over a summer. And I was a cook up in this camp in the mountains in California. And my the night before I left for this month long volunteer work, uh, my mom made me apply to, to Abilene Christian University, and she's like, "Just apply, like you know, just see what it where it goes." I'm like, "Fine, mom." And so I threw my application, and literally, I just finished packing for this trip, and then went online real quick and and submitted it. Totally, I've I had forgotten about it. I get this call uh from my mom. This is before cell phones, everybody. Um, so my mom calls the camp. This is like 90, 99, 2000. So not everyone's got cell phones. I didn't know at this point. Mm -hmm. And my mom goes, Hey, ACU called and they're accepting your application, but you have to do an, uh, an entrance interview. It's like, okay. So I did my interview over the phone at this camp up in the mountains. And the week I had to decide, I was sitting there going like, Lord, I don't know what I want to do. Like, I, I, you know, like I, I've, I was kind of feeling that hurt too. Like there was some things going on in my life at the time when I'm like, man, I've tried to follow and it's just not like, I don't know. I'm still in pain. I'm still depressed. I'm still suffering. Um, and, but then there was a group of kids in, at this camp in the mountains in California from Abilene, Texas, that happened to be there the week that I had to make my mind up. And I was just like, Lord, I think that's a sign. And so, yeah, I literally called them. was like, yep, I'm in. And I didn't know anything about the school at that point. Like, I really didn't because my parents signed all the paperwork and did everything for me because I was gone. And uh, I came home, was home for a week and literally packed my stuff up and moved out to Texas. And all of my friends at home were like, wait, you're leaving? Like, yeah. <laughs> and so I didn't even get to say bye to everybody. It was just, it was that quick. But it was more of just... I don't I think God when you when you really start opening up to the possibilities that God wants in your life, he really can pull you in in directions that you didn't see coming. Um and mm -hmm. I think I, I I I think all of us need to do that. And one prayer that I've been trying to say lately is using me as a tool, an instrument. And that's a scary one because I I was praying, I was kind of praying on that, meditating through it and thinking through. Lord, what are you actually going to be calling me to do? Like, am, are you going to be calling me to do something insane that I'm going to be like, I don't want to do this. Um, yeah. But, you know, we got, we got to follow that. So mm -hmm. awesome. So, so let's kind of move forward a little bit. And where did y'all meet? How did y'all start? Because now you guys don't even live in the same area. So um, where did y'all meet? Yeah. Um, so I don't think I mentioned how I ended up in Chicago. I was at Franciscan yeah. and then I had my reversion to the faith and I felt like very called um, to work at this ministry here in Chicago for a year um, that uh, is really interesting. It was helping men that are in um, are were in like prostitution, survival prostitution. So um, that was super interesting. And, but the ministry itself was very ecumenical. I actually showed up and I was the only Catholic there. And that was like very different than my experience being at Franciscan, which is like, you're just surrounded by Catholics. And I was raised pretty much surrounded by Catholics. Uh, my mom's side of the family, there were some Protestants, but like 
we didn't talk or dialogue, you know, really. Well, especially so. if they were Church of Christ. So, yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, and uh, when I I started, that's when I started thinking about like I don't know, like learning more about Protestantism, and so I did the year at that ministry, and then I started working at a um, like crisis pregnancy center. Okay. And that organization is Catholic, but then that's where Megan was working. So we actually okay. met at that job. And I don't know, Megan, you can talk about how you ended up there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, um, as I was like graduating college, um, my degree was in ministry to women. Um, so I really felt called to work with women and, and it was funny. I actually applied to this job on like a whim because I had a, a conversation with someone who was pro-choice and it made me very upset. And so I applied to work for a pro-life pregnancy center <laughs> and ah, I was you. accepted. Or... <laughs> so I went in for an interview, um, but my role was um, a client advocate, like actually working with the women who were facing unplanned pregnancies. Um, and so it was a, a neat way to use my degree because I was like just on the ground actually ministering to these women. But yeah, that's where Jackie and I met. And I had some interactions with Catholics before working there. I grew up, one of my best friends growing up was Catholic. Um, so I would go to mass with her family once in a while. I had family members who were Catholic, but mostly I just grew up in like an evangelical bubble mm -hmm. and so then it wasn't until college when I actually started learning more about theology and then working at this Catholic organization that I was like exposed to it more so I just found it really interesting I it just saw it as an opportunity like oh I really want to learn like I'm excited to like learn about this other tradition and when Jackie and I met we just like instantly clicked. We were like, oh my gosh, our personalities are so similar. We really get along. Um, and just like really early on found that neither of us really were uncomfortable with talking to each other about our faith um, and even like arguing about it or like debating. <laughs> um, and people would hear us and they'd be like, oh my gosh, are you scared of like offending each other? And we were like, oh, I just feel like we have this understanding that like we respect the other person and like really truly value them and like see their faith as genuine um, so that we're actually able to have these conversations and ask these questions. Right. So it was really that friendship that sort of gave the foundation that we were able to like talk about more difficult things. And I could ask questions like, why do you think Mary is like a virgin? Like, what? what is that about? <laughs> and we could actually like right. talk about it. <laughs> yeah, we didn't go into it actually that we were going to focus on our faith differences. We realized that we were okay talking about a lot of uncomfortable things surrounding like mental health and um, like purity culture and sexuality in the church and things like that. And we felt that we'd had like very similar experiences as women, even in our different traditions and at our colleges, which I feel like Moody in some ways was the Protestant version of Franciscan and a lot of the ways like culturally. So yeah, we didn't go into it like we were going to really focus on the faith, but that has become kind of the main point of our podcast now, just because it was what it seemed like people really wanted to hear. And it seemed just very fruitful for both of us to talk through those different things and research, um, not only our opinions and understand them better, but the others and to grow in a greater understanding of why they believe what they believe and that it's not stupid it actually can make sense and you can have a lot of respect for their opinion even if you disagree yeah i, I agree 100 percent. i have to ask did you all get to go to the saint john canchians in chicago to go to mass we have yeah we we actually did uh we um what was i forget what year it was but for um all saints day they had a bunch of relics. Yeah. And so Jackie took me to St. John Cantus, like, oh, she takes a Protestant to like see all these relics. Um, but we had funny. a really great time. Yeah. So we've been there. Uh, like, even as a convert, that's still the one thing that I'm like, that's so weird, but cool. <laughs> it's like, weird. I got I got to go see the, um, I'm doing a video actually on this, uh, probably tonight is when I'm going to record it, but on relics, so that's kind of funny you mentioned that. Um, and uh, I got to go see the arm of St. Jude, um it was here here in town that was like that was the first time i've really gotten close to a relic it's weirdly cool like 
it's I don't know. It's hard to explain until you've until you've been there. But uh yeah, there was a huge line to get in to see it, and you could yep. spend 10 seconds in front of it, is all they would let you do. <laughs> and then you had to move along. So I definitely like placed a few things on the glass so that way I got some third class relics. Um, but anyways, well, yeah, we, we don't have to dive into relics there. Um, I saw that too. It was at St. John Cantus, actually. So oh, it was okay. Is mm -hmm. yeah, isn't it? I mean, it's a good chunk of his arm. Like it's it's like what six, seven inches of an arm bone. I think uh, I some I thought it was like his leg. I don't know what it is, but it's something from him, like a, a large amount. Yeah. 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 It's 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 crazy. But uh yeah, the Catholics and their relics. So it's weird. Uh yeah. it it's weirdly <laughs> cool. That's all that's the way I like to phrase it. So um no, that is awesome that that's how your guys y'all's uh friendship blossom was really being comfortable talking with one another because I think I think people have lost that art in society today to be able to have conversations with each other and be respectful of each other's opinions, but still disagree and be friends. Mm -hmm. That is so rare today that um I really think it's uh it I think I mean I mean, I'm not going to ask how old y'all are, but I'm 43. And so that totally was a normal thing in the 80s and 90s, having conversations with friends and avidly disagreeing with them on key topics, but still like, hey, all right, you want to go get some food after you have some big argument over a theological topic or, you know, uh, arguing with my atheist friends and then, all right, let's go get some Jamba Juice. Um, what, like, and I think today we're we are so segregated along um, theological and even I um, whatever ism lines you can think of. Um, and that's what I really, really liked about y'all's channel um, is you guys are breaking that stereotype that is now part of American society. And I, I, which I it's, well, there's so many things I can't stand right now, but that's one of them. And I think that's, that's a big basis for, where we see ourselves as a country now is because people have stopped talking and they just do headlines and yell at each other. So um, more power to you guys. That is, that is awesome. So um, yeah, that's, that's something we've definitely noticed too, is like either people avoid disagreement because it's uncomfortable and they don't, they're, they're worried about offending They're for whatever reason or they dive head first but it's very uncharitable it's not in good faith and they present caricatures of the other person you can see this with obviously protestant catholic but in all types of disagreements whether it's poli political or philosophical um yeah. people just caricature the other side as not that oh i disagree and you think something differently but you're actually evil and i need to show how you're morally wrong and so we really just approached it with how can we have conversations where we are charitable and actually believing the best about the person and allowing them to present what they believe instead of just sort of projecting onto them what we uh -huh. think they believe? Uh -huh. um, I remember in college, actually, um, my now husband was taking a class on the Reformation. And one of the like lectures that he heard was a, a guy who um, did a lot of like Protestant Catholic dialogues. And he said, the best way to heal the schism is to read each other's literature in front of the other person. So the idea being, if you're curious about Catholicism, like ask a Catholic, don't tell them yeah. what you think Catholic Catholics believe. Or if you are a Catholic and you don't really understand what Protestants believe, don't tell Protestants what they believe, ask them and have a conversation and listen. And you can walk away and still be like, well, I think they're wrong, or I think they're confused. But at the end of the day, I listened to them tell me right. what they believe. I didn't just and now you have better on them this caricature. Yeah. And I I because I think for me growing up Protestant, like all of my beliefs around Catholicism was completely centered around caricatures. And my Catholic friends were totally the the cafeteria Catholics, the um e uh, Christmas and Easter Catholics. So yeah, they went yeah. to Catholic school, but and they got through their confirmation, but they were not Christians. Like I, I wouldn't have thought of them that way because they never went to church. They had no understanding of the Bible. Like, and that was that was my experience growing up in, in Thousand Oaks. Um, and so um, it wasn't until I started reading literature and I started talking and having questions that I started understanding um, the the Catholic faith, and and I was like, wow. 
I didn't understand. I didn't realize that's what you guys believed. Um, and, and even likewise with different Protestant denominations, um, when you, um, like, so for church of Christ, right. They, they believe that they are the first church. Bear with me. They believe that they are the exact same as the first century church. And then if you're not church of Christ, you're not actually part of God's church, the fundamental beliefs, that's the start, right? So, um, even though they started in 1830, but we'll just slide past that. Um, and so that was my belief structure growing up. But then I'd start doing things like Young Life, and I'd start interacting with Bible church people, and I'd start interacting with mainline Protestant individuals. And I'd go, oh, no, there's stuff's cool. We're like, we're good. Like, we can have these conversations. We can have worship services together. We can get together and do devos. Um, and, uh, but it's all starts with dialogue and being open to understanding and listening to individuals. So, yeah, I, I totally agree. Mm-hmm. So, all right. So you guys are working at a, uh, a, a women's pregnancy center and which is fantastic by the way. So hats off to you, to y'all being that young, getting fresh out of college mm-hmm. and like diving into a very serious, very, uh, um, trying issue in Chicago of, uh, you know, I mean, it's not like you guys were down somewhere in the Bible belt or something like that. You're up, you're up in Chicago doing that. So hats off there. And you guys start having these conversations. Like, so when was the first time the idea of, you know, we should record these conversations. When did that happen? Yeah. So it was over COVID (laughs) and I was isolated in my whatever bubble. I essentially kind of lived alone. So I was pretty isolated. And then Megan was isolated with her husband. And we were talking a lot because we worked together. Um, And we started just joking about having a podcast for the organization that we worked for. Because one of our friends that had worked for another pro-life organization had started a podcast. But she had, it was a totally different kind of organization. It was more of a political organization Mm -hmm. where ours was ministry centered and actually like working with women in crisis pregnancies. So we were talking about it, all the things we could talk about. And um, we knew that we were like, oh, but our organization that we have does not you don't, you shouldn't have a podcast for the kind of, I don't know, nonprofit that we work at. But then I just kept thinking about it. And I don't know, I really do think it was the Holy Spirit. I kept thinking about it. And I was like, I just feel like Megan and I would really be good in a podcast together. I just feel like we have similar personalities. We're very comfortable talking about these different things. And there's just so much I feel like that we could talk about that I don't think is being um, spoken about in the way that we talk about them. Um, And I brought it up to her and I was like, okay, Megan, you can pray about this, but I really, I don't know. I'm just feeling like maybe this is something that we should do. And I really can't explain it other than I really do feel like it was the Holy Spirit. And Megan, she took time and she prayed about it. And then she came back to me and um, said that she also felt like that was a good idea. And Megan, you can speak more from your end, what you were thinking. Yeah, I think I just felt I think another thing you were saying too about how like growing up you felt like your denomination very much said that they were the only true Christians Mm -hmm. and then as you met other Christians you were like oh wait that's not true like we actually are very much united. I think that was what was so refreshing and neat to see becoming friends with Jackie was like even though we had these like very strong theological disagreements we were very intentional in like praying for each other and like encouraging each other Mm. um, pushing each other towards Jesus and I really felt like that's really neat and people don't see that often they really only feel like someone has to agree with me in order to like be an encouraging sister in Christ and that's just not true and so you know I after Jackie brought it up I was really praying about it and I just felt like that's unique and that's something that our world needs right now because our world, like we were saying earlier, is just so divided and so polarized. And I think people need to see that you can have a really deep, fulfilling, fruitful, and Christ-centered friendship with someone that you can have these disagreements with. 
and maybe even the disagreements make it a stronger friendship because you're willing to have these deep conversations yeah, yeah, I think it's rare to see a podcast. I think there's a lot of Protestant and Catholic dialogue on social media that is very, very charitable, which is good. But I think it's rare to see two people that are actually like best, genuinely best friends that are debating these things with each other and have a podcast together. <laughs> uh, yeah, I so, 100%. Yeah. And I think you might be being charitable with the charitable comment because most of it's just uh, arguing back and forth in uh, yeah. apologetics conversation, which... I'm totally fine with it. That's the platform, mm -hmm. but that's, that's guys that are apologists, right? That's not everyday life. That's not our common interactions here at the little league where, um, you know, like my, I'm really good friends with dads that are Lutherans and non-denominationals and we're still buddies, even though I'm Catholic. And, um, and then if they find out I'm a convert, they're like, why? what and so we have conversations and you know it's great um but it's it, it's that's yeah the the stuff we see online and the arguing back and forth which i think is fine but those most of those are done by guys that that's what they do for a living and so i think with y'all it kind of brings it back to like you said you guys are friends and so how do you keep a friendship going when you have some like they're not insignificant disagreements they are right i mean jackie i know you would rather megan be uh catholic or and then megan you're like it'd be really nice if you were protestant like deep down you both want, want each other to, you want the best for each other right but you're still mm -hmm. going to be friends and still respect each other and i think that's what that's the beauty of what you guys have created so um yeah i mean you guys have been doing it since 2020 and i know youtube you haven't been posting for that long i think two years yeah. on youtube but i know i was looking on your spotify and you guys go back to october 2020 um and so when you guys started off that so it, it started off more was it more about women's issues at the beginning i'm kind of looking back here like uh so that was the start of it and then it kind of quickly went into faith conversations um because i mean episode six you guys have a hinduism to catholicism uh talk and then but yeah so how what did it slowly morph into just being more about faith or like how quickly did that did that happen i think early on it was always our intention to do a few episodes yeah. addressing that difference because when we first started we wanted to model like talking about really hard things like that's why we named our podcast let's talk about it like there are these issues there's mental health there's sexuality there's all these really difficult topics that people either can't have the conversation well or they just disagree on and so they'll only talk about pe with people they agree on so it's like let's talk about these things it's okay to just have a conversation to have guests on to hear other perspectives and so early on it was it was more on that um and then we sort of on a whim decided to do an episode on sola scriptura which i was actually really nervous about um <laughs> just because even even though we had this friendship i was like oh my gosh like this is actually like we're disagreeing you know up until yeah. this point our episodes have been on things that we do agree on um, i don't know if you watched my conversion story but that literally was the uh was the first domino that fell <laughs> for me but anyways go ahead <laughs> so yeah. yeah so we decided to an episode on sola scriptura and then on like marian um doctrines yeah and i think it was really good for us because it was our first little step into being able to have those conversations and we walked away and realized like we can actually do this it's like everything is okay awesome. it's actually really good um and those episodes did the best like people really loved those they thought it was like really really interesting um so we still do episodes on other topics as well, but people just really enjoy hearing us talk about our different faith differences and yeah. talking about different theological things. So as of recently, especially now that we're on YouTube, we have leaned more into that uh, just because that's what people are interested in. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I remember how nervous we were, Megan, to do those episodes, which is so funny. Um, we were nervous in general to record. I remember being like, oh, this is so, uh, I don't know. We were just recording podcast audio. We were so nervous, even though we could edit it. I don't know. But I remember before the Solo Scriptura and Mary episodes, we were both 
incredibly nervous. Like, oh, I don't want to say anything, something that's going to offend her or upset her, even though we'd written it out before. <laughs> Y'all but dove off the deep end for your first episode. <laughs> like, that's the yeah, that's we definitely dive right first. in. That wasn't like, uh, you know, I don't know. Like, you did go into something, um, I don't, I'm trying to think of something easier to dive into between those. Yeah, uh, we just went for it. Y'all went straight in feet first. Like, let's go. <laughs> let's get to the heart of the issue. <laughs> I think because our, our friendship before that, we'd already been talking about those things so much, um, especially the Mary thing, because I have such a big devotion to her. It's probably mm -hmm. even, I don't know, like I'm kind of, I've tamed some, but <laughs> uh, it's pretty obvious. I'm like, just me and my faith so and that to Megan was like whoa what this is a lot you know yeah. like Mary but so we would talk about that already so I think that we um we're just kind of ready at that point once we got to the podcast to just talk about those things more yeah and Mary Mary's always a hard issue for Protestants to understand um it, it wasn't I understood a lot like I was okay with Mary even going into RCIA, but I didn't quite, it didn't click for me um, until I started learning about the apparitions because uh, as a Protestant, I didn't know about Lords. I didn't know about Fatima. I didn't know about Our Lady of Guadalupe. Like I'd seen images of that just from popular culture growing up in Southern California with a m largely Hispanic population. I like, I didn't realize that was Our Lady of Guadalupe, right? Like I had no clue. Uh, but I'd see that stuff all over the place. And I think uh, understanding the what was what a happened at those and then the consequences of those apparitions was like, oh, now I get it. But um, Mary's a, Mary's a hard one. And so hats off to Megan for you to, to sit there and, OK, so why do you believe this? Like how? What? And yeah, because I know a lot of people that wouldn't even be able to sit through that conversation. So hats off to you on yeah, that we've done some episodes Two after we of, yeah Go after ahead. we did those episodes we had people start to reach out and be like wait can you talk about this can you talk about confession can you talk about praying to the saints can you talk about you know and so yeah. that was another reason too we started diving more into those issues was people were interested and they were actually giving us topics that they really wanted to hear yeah, and I love the last was, two videos y'all just did with why you're Catholic and why you're Protestant. That's just fantastic because, yeah, um, yeah I, I watched both those. Those are great guys, by the way. <laughs> what were you going to say, Jackie? Sorry. I was just going to say along the Marian apparitions, um, we have done some episodes on those, but um, I think it helps that Megan is like started out not being really anti-Catholic or... I don't know. She was like open. She's gone to mass with me and she worked at like our organization with Catholic that she was working at where we met. And she actually went to an event with me that was all about Our Lady of Guadalupe. It was for an, an um, Latino organization that I support. And they were doing um, an event on around the time, the feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, like a whole video and someone from Notre Dame that's like studied her and written a book on different things about her apparitions came and presented. Um, and Megan was most definitely the only Protestant there for sure. Uh, and she came with me. So it's like stuff like that where, I don't know, it just makes our friendship more. So the I don't know. Yeah. We're like willing to go to each other. Like I would go to some of the church uh, services or women's meetings at her church. And um, we're willing to actually really like dive in with each other into these things and listen to each other and talk about them. So um, yeah, I think it, it has made it even more fruitful. Yeah, I I agree, and you can you can tell it by watching y'all's episodes. I think uh, y'all are genuinely really good friends, and you genuinely uh, want the best for each other. Um, but quick story on on Mary, right? So, uh, my on my dad's side of the family, there's a bunch of Catholics that are like my second, like my great aunt and uncle were Catholic, and so I have a bunch of like third and fourth cousins that are Catholic. Not really close to them, but when my great aunt died, um. She was living in Tulsa and I was in Dallas at the time. And so I was the closest family member. My parents couldn't make it out. So I drove up with my family uh, for the funeral. And so they had a, um, I'm going blank on the name, the day before the funeral. Um, anyways, the whole family went went to, went to the parish and it was kind of like a, um, they started praying the rosary 
And so I'm sitting there going, this is the dumbest thing, but I'll just go ahead and hum along with it. Right. Like I, I didn't know anything, but it's the, our father that would get me every single time. So as Protestants, if we're saying the, our father, we go for thine is the kingdom of glory in heaven forever. Amen. Right. And so Catholics, when you're doing the, the most, of the, you don't do that. And so, yeah, I had never prayed a rosary before. I didn't even know what we were doing. Like I was just following along every single end of the decade when we would start a new one and pray the Our Father. I would every time dead quiet and go thine <laughs> over. It took it, it took like four decades. I finally on the fifth one, I didn't do it. Um uh, it was so embarrassing. And it was to the point that like my grandmother, who's who's Protestant, and though it was it was her sister that died. And then my my youngest son or my oldest son was there with me too. And we were almost giggling because I couldn't stop from, <laughs> from doing it. I'm like, what is wrong with you? You know it's coming. Um, anyways, but yeah, it was I felt like a fish out of water a hundred percent. So and then uh, the next day when they had the the, the mass uh, for her, um, I'm in the front with the family. So I wasn't going to get up to go take the Eucharist because I was like, well, I know I'm, I can't, I don't think. So I'm just going to sit here. But there was no way that everybody else could get by me. So I had to get up there. And nobody told me the cross in the arms thing. And I'm sure Megan's mm -hmm. or Jackie's probably told you, hey, when you come, just cross your arms. You can get a blessing. You don't have to, you know. No one told me that, but thank the Lord, the priest was pretty observant. And I'm sitting there like, ah, and he goes, how about a blessing? I'm like, yes. So it was completely awkward. Uh, so yeah, that it's, that was my very first, uh, Catholic experience. Um, and it was nothing but awkward. So, and that was years I had a before. similar experience growing up because, uh, one of my friends who was Catholic, her grandmother passed away. And so I went to the funeral with my friend to support her and it was a very Catholic funeral. Um, and I just like, didn't even know, but yeah, they all went up for communion and I just joined them because I was like, like, why wouldn't you? And it wasn't until afterwards. She was like, so by the way, you're not supposed to do that. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, so I've it, accidentally had Catholic communion. Right. I, well, my wife used to go to a mass all the time with her friend when they were in college and her friend didn't even mention it to her and she would take communion all the time. And I'm like, okay, your friend was not catechized, but, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of Catholics receiving communion that probably should be, they should yeah. just go ahead and take the blessing and they're not, they're not in the state of yeah. grace, you know? Um, yeah, a hundred percent. And, uh, but yeah, that, that's, that's fantastic. So what's, uh, what's next? Uh, up for your guys's channel and uh podcast there hmm. what do you guys have coming up well we're i think we're gonna keep talking about the faith issues there was a lot that came up from the why i'm protestant why i'm catholic different issues that we talked about that more people wanted and even just us when we were doing those we wanted to dive in more i think we want to talk more about the priesthood and the difference between the protestant view of the priesthood and the catholic view um and just, we might even dive into more of the different Protestant denominations and the differences there. Yeah. Another episode we're going to do is Megan going to a Lutheran church as a non-denominational Protestant and kind of some of the differences there. Because I think a lot of Catholics don't really understand the differences between. And there's differences um, between different... Lutheran churches, between yeah. a high Lutheran and, and a low Lutheran. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's some of what we, we're going to also still talk about some other things outside of catholic first protestant some other things that we're passionate about or have guests that we're interested in having on but i think the main focus probably will be still diving into those theological disagreements that we have that that's awesome yeah i think um yeah it's so it, it's happened into the uh different differences between protestant denominations is is huge because they're it is so hard for me a lot of times, right? Like uh, if you guys have watched uh, enough of my videos, I typically go into, this is what I thought about, how I thought about this when I was a Protestant. And this is the way I see it now as a Catholic. And being able to talk about 
like I have to talk in generalizations because there's so many differences on some of these topics where people just talk, uh, have a different opinion on it, depending if you're Methodist, if you're Lutheran, if you're a Bible church, if you're a fundamentalist type church, um, it's, it's a, it's a smorgasbord of opinions on some things. Um, but anyways, I, I think that's cool that you guys are going to be doing that. So, um, but yeah, so thank you guys so much for coming on. I really enjoyed our conversation and everybody check out the links below. I'm going to have all their, all their links to everything in, in the, the description below. Um, go subscribe to their channel, uh, follow their, their Spotify. They're on Spotify. You guys are on a number of different platforms. So everything will be down below. So y'all can, whatever platform you guys want to listen to them in or watch, uh, go for it. So, uh, thank you guys very much for coming on. I, I appreciate this today. Yeah. Thanks so much for having us. I enjoyed yes, this interview you. and, um, yeah, one day I'd be interested in hearing more about your story of why you converted. So. Yeah, I would love to come on if you guys want to have me and talk talk through that. So for sure. Yeah, you can tell Megan why she needs oh, she... to convert. Yes, yeah, exactly. I, I joke with my Lutheran friends. It was Luther that made me Catholic. So uh, anyways, yeah, I, I would love to do that. So uh, yeah. But yeah, just let me know and I'll be glad to come on. So well, thank you guys very much. Yeah. Thanks everyone else for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. Share this video. We need to have more dialogue like this as Catholics and Protestants because we all are children of God. We all are one in Christ. And yes, we have differences. And yes, they are worth talking about, but we still need to be charitable with our conversations. And and remember at the end, we are all trying to get to heaven. So anyways, thanks y'all. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye. <laughs>